how can we get what we need to get done, done? And academically, we're talking about things like, how do we get our homework done? How do we prepare our materials so that you know, we could be an A-plus student, but if we can't find the paper that we just wrote, we're not going to be an A-plus student. That's a problem a lot of our students have. Um, things like, we're going to talk today a little bit about procrastination. Um, so what I do, bookends Monday and Friday, start the week with a topic, and the week on that same topic, a week-by-week -week theme. Um, so Monday we might go over Know, how to finish a paper, or how to start a paper. Friday might be how to finish a paper. Today I'm going to be talking about procrastination. Show of hands, how many procrastinators in the room? About half the room, maybe a little more. Um, I know I'm a procrastinator. I, uh, when I taught this section, I, I learned quite a bit about myself and what type of student I was in college. So I'm just going to read off some myths, or you may believe they're truths. Um, there's definitely some room for discussion here, maybe some debate. But uh, number one, and this was my, my biggest crutch uh, academically, is I do my best work under pressure. How many of you feel that way? Somewhat, a few. For me, what that meant was I'm going to wait until the very last minute to study for a test write a paper, so you end up cramming or pulling an all-nighter. You don't end up feeling very good the next day, but you know, it worked for me. I did pretty well in school, so um, it worked for me. But what we can do is maybe reframe that thought or sort of train your brain to create some pr pressure in other ways, like instead of, say, you have a paper due February 3rd, instead of on February 2nd at the very last minute starting that paper, maybe try to think that, okay, what if I pressure myself into having this paper due a week ahead of time? So you write on your calendar, paper due January 28th or whatever it is, um, put it in your planner, emails, whatever it is, the 28th, 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 you keep telling yourself that, and eventually, the 27th comes around and there's some pressure on you to get that paper done or at least start it, and it's a good technique to use for starting the paper or getting some work done. Um, does that sound like it would work for anybody in here who maybe pushes things off to the last minute? You say maybe, um, you, you shook your head, you don't think it would work? I think it would work better if I portioned it out. Portioned it out? Okay, that's a, that's a really good technique to use. Um, I, I, don't I haven't had success with it, but <laughs> I, would, I think it would work better. Yeah, I don't suggest to anybody to, to do the whole paper at once or to cram at the very last minute. That's there. refreshing to hear. Yes, yeah, that's, that's not the best technique, but I was uh, probably case number one. And for that. Refreshing and encouraging um, to hear. Yes, yeah. Um, myth number two. In order to work on my paper, I must have six uninterrupted hours or whatever time frame it may be, a, a large chunk of time to, to work on a paper. Or, or for, for today's example, I'm using writing a paper, but this could go for anything. Um, how many of you feel like you need a, a large chunk of time to get anything done? Nobody. That's good. Uninterrupted, you said uninterrupted. Uninterrupted, yes. Well, a lot of our students have this feeling that you know, why would I spend the 15 minutes in between reframing in my first class to work on homework or to start writing a paper or something like that? And you have to reiterate that, no, you're not going to get the paper done in 15 minutes. You're probably not even going to get a whole paragraph done in that time. But if you can get a sentence done, that's, that's progress. And if you're thinking about that assignment or whatever you're working on throughout the day, that's a good thing. That's, that's something to, to focus on throughout a day. So that's, that's another technique we can use. Number three, I know it's time for me to start writing, but I just haven't done enough research yet. I'll spend one more night at the library, and then I'll start writing my paper tomorrow. How many of you have ever done this or felt this way? Why? Anybody? You're putting it off still. You're still putting it off, right? What's, what's the hardest part about writing a paper? Putting 
pen to paper. Writing the paper, right? Just actually doing it, getting some ink on paper. Um, so, uh, please. When you say paper, you mean like, and like no typing, but just. Oh, it could be typing as well, typing or handwriting, whatever it is. Um, a lot of our students type because their handwriting is not very good. Um, but you could do research on a topic indefinitely. There's, there's so many sources out there that you could keep saying, well, I, I could do a little more research. There's more that I could find out. But you can always start a paper, do some more research, get back to writing. As you're writing, you're going to come up with new ideas, new topics for further research. So it's, it's a process. You don't do all your research. And then write, and it's it's not two separate things. You know, uh, sorry, right? you said what I was going to say. Okay, great. Um, next, and this was this one was another big one for me. I can't function in a messy environment. I can't possibly write this paper until I've cleaned my study space or my workspace. Raise of hands. How many feel this way? A few. I see some smiles in the back. Um, why? If I clean something, I can start it, finish it, and I'm done. I've accomplished something. If I've got this big thing called a paper in front of me, I just sort of start, I know I'm not finishing it. I don't feel like I'm progressing. Okay. So does it, if you maybe clean up and you have completed a task, does it give you some confidence to go on to the next task? Well, it's just that it makes me feel better than I did looking at my piece of paper. Okay. And to do it. And to it. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sure. I'm just smiling because personally, I'd rather get pen to paper and start up. You'd rather do that. I'd paper. rather do that than clean, yeah. Okay. Well, and for some of our students, it really is necessary to have a clean space because it can be very distracting to have a mess around you, whether it's an, a physical mess or a, other noise going on or something like that. You need to clear your head, and if cleaning your space clears your head, well, that's something that, you know, it, it may be technically procrastination, but it's going to help you to get your paper done. Comment, question? Um, for me, it doesn't really matter what um, kind of space I'm in. Okay. Um, but I do tend to listen to music often whenever I'm writing something. A lot of our students well, listen to music well, while they do their homework or work on papers. And I was never one that could do that. It was distracting to me, but... For some reason, our students, that actually, like, just silence is distracting to them. They need that, some sort of stimulus going on, so that's, that's common among our students. Um, but I, I need a clean space to write a paper, or whatever it may be. Next, what I write has to be perfect, or I can't write anything until I have the perfect thesis statement or intro. Raise of hands, how many feel this way? Yeah, a couple. This one never really hit me as hard um, as some people, but whenever I wrote a paper, if I would have a thesis statement or an idea that I wanted to start with, as I wrote a paper, it would change. It would kind of morph into something else or progress. So what I started with wasn't always recognizable by the time I finished my paper. Um, and so the idea here is, Start with something. Just start writing. Just, you, you're going to come up with ideas as you go along. Um, a couple of hands were raised. Does that sound like something that would be beneficial to you? Yeah. Or, um, so I think that's a, that's a really good, good technique is just start writing paper. Get some ink on paper. Um, don't over plan. Don't over plan because your plans are going to change. Uh, your, your thoughts are going to change as you go along. Um, so that, those are the five myths I had for procrastination. I don't know if that's going to be helpful for any of you, but um, just a brief word on that sort of the rundown of a bookends class. Like I said earlier, it's Monday to Friday, or Monday and Friday, excuse me. And I'll spend 30 minutes or so going over a theory like what we talked about today, or it may be how to take notes, or what type of learner you are, or something like that. And then the last 15 minutes of bookends is spent physically with each student going through their materials, their notebook, their book bag, and seeing what are some things you could be doing better here. You know, you seem pretty dis or, uh, 
disorganized, unorganized? Disorganized. Disorganized. Um, you know, what are some things I can do to help you out? And, you know, class sizes, five to ten students, it can be hard to complete something in that time, but what I'll do is then go on and talk to either an advisor or the academic tutor and um, say, you know, that so-and-so could use some help with their, their materials or their planner, maybe they're, you know, not planning out assignments properly, um, and then they can spend maybe an entire 45-minute tutoring session continuing, you know, something that we've worked on in bookends. So that's, that's sort of a gist of bookends.